Welcome to your YouTube channel. God bless you. You are about to listen to a message from the throne of the Almighty God in the lips of a pastor. Your blessings await you as you listen and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership, and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click the select icon. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you. Let us pray. The Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, will come before you because we are the mighty God. As we look at your word now, you will touch our lives. You help us, O Lord, to follow your word, the wisdom in your word, the direction in your word, the guidance in your word, so that we will not mistake. We will not take the wrong step. You will guide us. You will help us. Illuminate our understanding in our eyes. As we look at your word now, in Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen, amen, and, and amen. You may please be seated. The Lord wants to teach us today through the topic, your blessings are waiting for you in the middle of your obedience. Your blessings are waiting for you in the middle of your proactive obedience. In this series, as to the call of the Almighty God, part 194. You know, last week we talked about proactive obedience. There's a blessing attached to proactive obedience. In the middle of your proactive obedience, there are practical, physical blessings that you can, you can tap into. It's very, very, very key. I need you to open your ears, open your heart, as we we'll look at this word of God intently as the Holy Spirit will lead us. And as we are listening to the word of God, forget about the past. The frustrations of the past, the disappointments of the past. Um, but all the Lord wants you to do is that you want to be obedient and you want to be proactively obedient. And because of that, it will visit you and it will touch you. We're looking at the introduction now. Receive your blessings in the middle of obedience. Receive your blessings in the middle of obedience. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David held them. The first Samuel 17, verse 24, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were so afraid. The first Samuel 17, verse 25, And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel, is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches. I will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. The first Samuel chapter 17, verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? Take it away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the uh, that he should defy the armies of the living God? In First Samuel chapter seventeen verse twenty-seven, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, "So shall it be done to the man that killeth him." If we look at this passage now, because we're looking at your blessings will come to you in the middle of your proactive obedience. Now we understand this, so that we don't get it out of context. David was established to be a proactive, a proactive obedient servant. He was proactively obedient. The father called him, go get this food items to your brethren. Go get this food items to the captain of the thousand. The father did not tell him that he should get a keeper for the sheep that he was going to leave behind. And David did not tell the father, father, take care of the sheep for me since you are sending me on the errand. He got a keeper for the sheep that he left behind. He was proactively obedient. And then he gets in the carriage or the conveyance that took the food, the cheese, and everything to the bread and to the captain of the thousand. When he got there, he was very, very proactive. He left the carriage with the keeper taking care of the carriage. And then he went to serve the captain and serve his brethren. The keeper to take care of the carriage. David was proactive. Now, this kind of proactiveness will bring blessings. What to do so that 
if you have been practically obedient the entire time throughout last week, you'll be practically obedient, the blessing will come to you today. At the end of this teaching, you will see the blessing will visit you, will touch you because your eyes will be opened. Now you look at this now. Save the people talking to the brethren. He has finished talking to them. As he was talking to them, Goliath came up and said what he was, what he was saying. Don't forget. He threatened them 40 days. Saying the same thing over and over again. Goliath will say, if you get someone to, to kill me, we'll serve you. But if I defeat you, you will serve me. And now that's what he kept on saying. And this time around, when Goliath appeared again and gave out and issued out his threat, the Bible recorded that the Israeli army or the soldiers, they ran for their lives. They were scared. They were scared for their lives. They were so scared that David witnessed this and said, ah. and they said with, with their mouth, and they said, this man is defiling the, 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 the army of Israel. It's never done. Why is he talking to us like this? So the vaccine saw no solution to the problem. And none of the Israelites could even provide a solution. The elder, the elder brothers of, of David could not provide a solution. Nobody could provide a solution. Even the strongest man in Israel could not provide a solution. The John Goliath with his regalia. The John Goliath was threatening. And all the guards were was, was shouting. And don't, don't forget, the Goliath itself was a demon. Was Satan personified in the person of Goliath, the, of God? Because we are looking at Goliath. You are looking at Satan. You are looking at the problem or the challenge that is posing before you and threatening your joy and trying to take away your joy out of your life. You are looking at him, threatening and shouting. Your problem is reverberating and he's shouting and emphasizing, I will deal with you. You will never be happy. I will deal with you. You will never make it in life. I will deal with you. Your business will go through. I will deal with you. You are looking at the Goliath and as time he shouts, this time he shows off himself, you are afraid. You lose confidence in yourself. You lose confidence in you having success in your exam. You lose confidence in your business prospect. You lose confidence in your marriage. You lose confidence in so many things because the Goliath will shout and read. And you will get people to help orchestrate their head, to help remind you of the things that you fear the most. And when Goliath came up and he shouted and he said what he said, the men of Israel took cover. They ran for their lives. They ran for their life. And David witnessed the disgraceful act. And he was looking at them with such an amazement. You know what? The Lord was preparing ground for his greatness. And as I look at that, it was not petrified. It was not afraid. It was not carried away. And then the people were saying, ah, who can take this man down? Who will do this for us? Because we know if anybody can do this for us, the king will give out his daughter for marriage. The king will do this for the family. The king will do that for the family because they're scared. Nobody could do that. Even the strongest of them could not stand with that. And David heard all of that. And he responded with boldness. He responded with negotiation. He responded with uh, proposals. And then he knew the time had come. Don't forget, David was anointed before this time. And uh, here was the time for him to explode. The time for him to show what he had within him. So you could be anointed. You could have the grace of God in your heart. You could have the grace of God in your life. And that grace of God in your life, that grace of God in your life, that grace of God in your heart, will come, time will come where you need to unleash and demonstrate the power of God in your life. The Holy Spirit wishes to speak to us or minister to us in two points. Point number one, dedicated obedience, returning calculated rounds of blessing. Dedicated obedience, returning, number one, calculated blessing. Number two, rounds of blessing. A measured calculated blessing, the proportion and the way it's measured. And rounds of it will also come. Dedicated obedience, Dedicated proactive obedience. Dedicated obedience. It will return calculated and rounds of blessing. And then point number two. Devoted obedience. Raising confidence and receipt of blessings. You look at it there. It's not just devoted. Devoted proactive obedience. Raising confidence and receipt of blessings. Now you look at the one. Dedicated obedience. It will return to you calculated. Measured rounds of blessings. And then number two. Devoted obedience will raise your confidence it will raise your confidence level and then receipt of blessing you receive it now you see number one the calculated and receipt of blessing rounds of blessing calculated and the rounds of it now your blessing will be calculated your blessings will be measured and then you receive it in rounds and then the point number two your blessing 
Your blessing will be raised. It will raise your confidence. You will receive the blessing. Get the narrative. Get it straight. Number one. Point number one again. Dedicated obedience will return. Calculated and rounds of blessing. Dedicated obedience will return in calculated and rounds of blessing. Point number two. Devoted obedience will raise your confidence and then you receive the blessing, which means even when you are you have dedicated proactive obedience and your blessing have been calculated and the rounds of blessings are there for you. If you, if your confidence is not raised, if you do not understand that you have drifted from fear to having confidence, you will not be able to receive the blessing. We'll be going to point number one right away. Dedicated obedience, returning calculated and rounds of blessing. Let's go. In first Samuel chapter 17, verse 23, and he said, Talk with them. Behold, there came out the champion, the Philistine of God. Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. In first Samuel chapter 17, verse 24, and all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were so afraid. In first Samuel chapter 17, verse 25, and the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up, and it shall be that the man who killed him and the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. Now, the issue here is this the people will speak up for you. When the time of your blessing has come, they will not only say things that will make you understand your time is now. Now, David witnessed that he has not said anything initially. But the people were already talking. Anybody that kills this man, Saul will give him his daughter. Saul will enrich him. Saul will make his heart free in Israel. They were already talking. Anybody that did this, anybody that did this. And the question was, they've been there the whole time. They were there weeks running. And they know this within themselves. Were they talking to a young lad like David that was much younger than all of them? He wasn't muscular like the soldiers in the army. Why were they reporting to him? As though he was the savior. Can't you get? Can't you reason this out? A young man just came to serve food, and uh, while he was talking to his brother and all of that, and this thing came up. And we see these things now. Were there no other person in the army in Israel? Way back home, they were the war form that was as muscular, as strong as the soldiers in the army. He so recruited the best of the men, and the best of the men were at the war forms. They were reporting to a young man. And that anybody that will do this now, the castle will give his daughter. Anybody that will do this now, he will have this, he will have that. You know, people around you announce your blessings when your time has come, and they will announce it without knowing. Unknowingly, they will be saying things, but you will understand that they are speaking about you. But you will understand that this is really your time. But you will understand that they are talking about you. They will just be talking. And the same thing that are not it doesn't even make sense. But let me just give you an instance, for instance. Now, you are going to teach calculus, or maybe you also teach calculus, maybe differentiation. And you got to maybe primary one or grade one in primary school, maybe a child of like maybe seven years old or something, and you want to teach calculus. How would this child understand the concept of calculus? It does not make sense. Or you are trying to give a, a chicken or a, a beef. To a day old child that the Lord blessed you with. And instead of you to breastfeed that child, you took chicken. I want to bring you to give to that child. You don't want to know you want to kill that child. And now they were talking about lofty things, heavier things made for men to chew. Men who can take down this giant. They themselves, older in age than David, muscular in body than David. Fit to be in the army of Israel. David was not fit to be in the army of Israel. And they were not telling the young man, since in his presence, whoever takes down this man, his family will free in Israel. Whoever will take down this man, he will marry the daughter of the king. What were they asking for a young man to do? They were actually announcing the destiny of David. And they never knew they were doing so. Now we're looking at the people bestowed divine blessings upon your life. I read again for Samuel chapter 17, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the first Samuel chapter 17, verse 25. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come? And it shall be 
that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And he was talking to David, reporting to a small boy, reporting to a boy who has no capacity to be in the army, reporting to the boy, literally looking at him physically. He didn't have the nerve, he didn't have the senior strength, he didn't have the energy, he didn't have what it takes to fight or to take down Goliath. They were reporting to him. Because you see, on their own, or knowing to them, the divine blessings of God was upon David, and they need to announce to him seriously. Because David was much younger than them, and they reported to him as if they knew that he had a solution to the national challenge. And funny enough, in all of those reports now, in David's heart, the Bible did not record that David was so afraid. The Bible did not record that the men took cover, and David took cover. The Bible said the men fled at the threat of Goliath. David did not take cover. David was not scared. He always stood and looking at them. Perhaps, perhaps when they saw the confidence of David, because he wasn't afraid, he didn't take cover like he did at the threat because of the threat of Goliath. And that's why maybe they reported to him. But reporting to a young man uh, that cannot even carry a log of food, reporting to a young man that was so young, reported after all, the bigger brothers were already there, you know. And so the Lord will touch you and I. Now, if you look at this now, the rounds of blessing was being calculated already by heaven. Not by men. When you are proactively obedient, you have done something right, you have shown some love to that brother, to that sister, you have proactively come into the shoes of that brother, to the shoes of that place, and you have done what is acceptable before the Almighty God. God in heaven has calculated rounds of blessings for you. And now, this teaching will open your eye that since He has calculated it, what do I need to do to tap into having those blessings? Right there. To show the evidence that the calculated the blessings of David coming to him was already calculated and the rounds of feet were coming. He wasn't afraid of the threat of Goliath. His heart was adamant, so strong, so consolidated. Not a fear entered his heart about what he saw. Now, you can apply that to your business place. You can apply it to whatever you are doing. And then you see you get to a certain place where you are to drop your proposal. Or you are in touch with the people. And they will say all kinds of things uh, that will want to discourage you. Uh, you can't have this contract now. You can't do this now. You will not be given a place in this in this establishment. Or you can't have this now. All of those straight, as long as you have been proactively obedient and you have settled with the Lord, you have been proactively obedient and you are useful to the kingdom of God. Don't let those straight get into your heart because your blessings have been calculated and the rounds of it are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Just like God was preparing David for the rounds of blessing. Of course, he knew. They felt it within him. That's why he was not afraid. Whatever they will say, like Goliath will scream, your rounds, your, your contract will not be approved. That's, that's Goliath talking. Will not accept his proposal at this time. That's Goliath talking. You can't get admission now. That's Goliath talking. You can't be here at this time. That's Goliath talking. And, and this your proposal will not be accepted by the chairman of the board. That's the Goliath talking. You will not be threatened by that because your blessings have been calculated. The rounds of, of them, your blessings are coming. And so, because of that, you'll stay put. And the prayer points for you and I, and let us pray to understand the greatness of the Almighty God, the greatness that the Almighty God has given to us. Let us pray to possess our destined greatness. Second green. In Psalm 26, verse 7, that I may publish with a voice of thanksgiving and tell of all that wondrous works. In Jeremiah 34, verse 2, God said the Lord, the God of Israel, go and speak to Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and tell him, God said the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into thy hand, or the king of Babylon, and he shall burn it with fire. A look at verse Psalm 26, verse 7. Go and publish your voice of thanksgiving. Tell of all the wondrous works. You have been practically obedient. That is why you did some wondrous works for him. And so, the best thing that is going to happen to you will be the voice of thanksgiving. You're going to come before the Lord. I be operative obedient to you, and now you have blessed me. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. With the fruits and with everything you have, you will thank the Almighty God. That is also point number two devoted obedience. Devoted obedience. Raising, raising confidence and receipt of blessings. Now, we'll look at our text from in Psalm chapter 17, verse 26. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, what shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine and take it away the reproach from Israel? Or oh, is this uncircumcised Philistine 
that he should defy the armies of the living God. And 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 27. And the people answered him after this man and saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. Because you have said it before. You see what we are saying here? You have said it before that the, the daughter will be given and the house will be free. So the people did not bother to repeat it again. Here in this verse there. And the people answered him after this man saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. Now, when you observe that things are falling to pleasant places for you, kindly apply your confidence and take possession of what the Almighty God has provided for your greatness. Things were already falling into pleasant places for David. He heard it that the Philistine was defying the armies of the Lord. And then he used that word again. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that is defying the armies of the Lord? And then he asked a question. What shall we do to the man that will do this? Now, now God, number one, the first point, has calculated your blessings. And there are going to be rounds of blessings. The mode of the blessings rounds. Rounds of it, not just one time, rounds of blessing. And the quantity is what we have been calculated. And the rounds of blessing, you know what? Which means the quantity is very, very stupendous. It's great, it's big, it's large. Rounds of blessings means one, two, three, and to end infinite. Continually. So for every portion, if you multiply the portion for each round, multiply the number of times the rounds will go. You can do the, the, the mathematics yourself. Now, the blessings of David are calculated by divinity because he was practically obedient. Now, the rounds were already coming. And now when he said it, he was not afraid. He stood. And then he wanted to negotiate because he knew that the blessings were there. Now, we're looking at negotiation for socioeconomic benefit. Prelude signs of your greatness. He wants to negotiate. Now, to remind you of this, let's go back to that passage again. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 26, and David spake to the man that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine? And take it away the reproach from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that should defy the armies of the living God? In 1 Samuel 17, verse 27, and the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. Now, now, he went for the negotiation table because he knew that he had the anointing and he had the priority the obedient. And he had done his practical obedience. Now here the blessings have to come. The blessings have been calculated. And the blessings were going to come in the mode, mode rounds that were going to come to him. Now he went to the negotiation table and he was talking to the people. Just like you go to the negotiation table before the people that you're doing business with. Whatever is staring red at your eyes. He went to the negotiation table. Number one, let's go. Let's, let's look at the procedure. Number one, he was not afraid. Don't mind you. Don't mind you. And I said, Goliath threatened. The Goliath said what you usually say. Your business will speak on the director of the people. The translation will say what they usually say. You are not threatened by that. Rather, David got boldness, number one. Threat of the Goliath, he got boldness. Let's apply it now. Threat of whatever it is that, that is threatening your business or threatening your academics or threatening your joy and satisfaction. Instead of David to be afraid or petrified, he was bold, number one. He became bold. And when he became bold, he gained confidence. That was why he was able to ask the people, what shall be done to the man that will take this man down? This uncircumcised this time. What shall be done for him? What shall be done for him? From boldness, he graduated to confidence. He had confidence, number two. Number three. From confidence, he was negotiating already, you know. He was negotiating his greatness. What shall be done to the man that will take down the Goliath? He was negotiating his greatness. Can't you imagine? A young man before people, hefty men, hefty people. A young man negotiating his greatness before them. Ha! Huh. I wish the soldier's eyes were opened. Or it is not played before them. They would have wondered, how can I be this kind of a script? And if somebody has written the script and say, one young man before hefty men negotiating his greatness before them, they'll say, no, the writer or the script writer uh, got it wrong. But God does not follow the norm. I mean, the, the expected outcome of the natural man. It goes for the supernatural. That thing that you think that will not work. No, it doesn't go that way. It goes for the supernatural. A young man before hefty men negotiating his fitness before them. These people have been in, been in the work camp for weeks. They've been there suffering. They're suffering. I can imagine their psychological trauma. 
Each time they see the Goliath morning and evening, threatening them, and they will take, they will take over. They can't run back home because Saul would not accept that. And these people were tortured psychologically. And once David just came that same day, he heard the Goliath like this and said, he wasn't afraid that the people were taking cover. He stood like a good brother. He stood confidently. And he said, instead of being afraid, he was bold. He had confidence. And the next thing was negotiating for his greatness. What shall be done for the man who will take down this man? That will take down this uncircumcised Philistine. He was negotiating his greatness. Why was he so confident? Because he had a trust to be obedient. Not only that, having negotiated, he acted. Because can we see that in later stories? He acted. And when he acted, what did he get? Success. Look at the steps. Number one, proactively obedient. Number two, he was not afraid that he was bold. Number three, he became what? Confident from the boldness. Number four, from confident level, he was negotiating for his greatness. And then number five, he took action. And then number six, the outcome came. Success. 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 And when he negotiated, he said, well, anybody that will take down this man will marry the daughter. And his house will be free in Israel. Saul will bless him. The king will bless him. The chief, the commander-in-chief of Israel will bless him. Okay? The next thing he did was to take action. Because we'll be reading later in Success for Studies, he took action. And the action will always come with success. He had success. He took down Goliath. And then when he took down Goliath, as we were studying later, he had success. It became the greatness was attained. Now listen, you have been proactive last week. The next step you have to take now, you go back to the things that have proved stubborn to you previously. Go back there now because no fear you have because you are backed up with the spirit of obedience or proactive obedience. And as you go back there, whatever the receptionist will say, whatever the papers will say, whatever the, the secretary will say, whatever the exam will may look, Whatever it is that you are going to face, that we look, whatever it is, whatever, whatever we say, will not make you afraid. Rather, you'll be bold. And as you're bold, as you're emboldened, then you have confidence. And in this, your confidence in that place, negotiate with the people and talk about how you will take your business to the next level. Talk about how you take your academic pursuit to the next level. Talk about how you will do this, how you will do that. Whatever it is that you're taking your job, talk about it, you negotiate. And as you negotiate, you take action. You take action. How will you take down your Goliath now? Because David physically went for Goliath and took him down. How will you do it now? Whoever is the stubborn person, just talk to the Lord privately. Lord, I'll be proud to be obedient and understand the word of God that you taught us this week. And I'm going to meet that man over there that is telling this is not possible. I'm going to call him on the phone now that has been telling me this is not possible. And I know that you will heed to me, will heed to my request. You put up a call, you'll get the answer. And the positive response will come. You go to that person, you go to that place, and then you say, I don't want us to visit that problem again. As you visit that problem, you see a vista of hope, a vista of joy, a vista of fulfillment will be open unto you. And then you have success. And your greatness will be achieved. And the Lord will touch you and I, and the Lord will help us. Because you see, this will dictate our business or career. This will be the pattern. Number one, proactive obedience. Number two, boldness. Number three, confidence number four negotiation before negotiation after negotiation action then action then you have success and the lord will help us you need to negotiate because you see when you have you have a proactively obedient and then you are not afraid you are bold and you have the confidence then you need to negotiate and then you have put it at maybe at level two before so i need to look at it now because you need I've been doing this and doing this and doing that. Take me to level six. Take me to level five. You negotiate it. You ne boldly say it. And you say, no, it is not time for me to actually negotiate. It wasn't time for David to take down Goliath. The physical nature did not qualify David to take down Goliath. Social economic stature did not qualify David to take down Goliath. It was just a man born, young man, without the requirements of being a soldier in the army of Israel. So you may not have the qualification to get to the next level. Negotiate. And as you negotiate, you take action. And as you take action, you have success. Your greatness will be achieved. But in all of this, before you start, go to the Lord and say, Lord, I heard your word of proactive obedience. And I was proactively obedient the entire time. And as I said, go right now. I may meet my Goliath on the way. 
I will take it down by a word, take it down by a word, I bang the guard, and I shut that mouth, shut that thing they be telling me the whole time. This time around, I'm going to sell, I'm going to succeed in Jesus' name. You ask the Lord as you go there, this is that same person I've been told, I told you before that it was not going to work. You will see the response will be positive. And as you negotiate, you will take your action. As you take action, you will see success, and the Lord will touch every one of us in Jesus' name. This you can apply. I don't know what is going on with you. Is it academics? Is it business? Is it marriage? Is it, um, is it career? Whatever it is that is, is your issue, just follow the procedure. Number one, proactive obedience. Number two, boldness. Number three, confidence. Number four, negotiation. Number five, action. And number six, success will surely trail you and the Lord will touch you and I in Jesus' name. And prayer points are let us pray to experience the blessings attached to proactive obedience. Let us pray to be able to enjoy the blessings that the Almighty God has blessed us with. So let's announce some point number one. There is a huge blessing awaiting your proactive obedience. So let's announce some point number two. Your greatness is closer to you than you can ever imagine. So let's announce some point number three. Be designing to know where your greatness lies. So let's announce some point number four. Focus on pleasing the Almighty God. And so let's announce some point number five. Keep your faith in the Almighty God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the question to you and I is, are you designing and negotiating your social economic blessings, following your proactive obedience? Are you designing? Are you negotiating already? Are you the negotiating table? Maybe over the phone, maybe over your laptop, maybe physically, maybe in your school, maybe at your home, maybe your community, maybe your state, maybe your country, wherever you are, on transit. Or in the plane, or in the vehicle, or in the ship, wherever you are, are you negotiating? Are you negotiating your social economic blessings? Following your spirituality blessings? If you are negotiating, praise the Lord. If you are not negotiating, start negotiating right now. Start negotiating right now, and the Lord will visit you. Let's go to the mirror of the Word of God. Mirror number six I. Women wearing mini skirts or dresses, tight clothing, shorts, bum shorts, bikinis. Swim shoot exposing sensitive parts. You have said that in the Sunday school. All these things are evil and will take you to hellfire. Men wearing tight trousers, shorts that are too short, and tight falsely showing private features, sagging trousers. Men wear shorts, so short, showing all their body, and they walk on the street with their body. And sometimes men feel that women don't lost that, and they lost that them too. When the women see the the nudity of the men, they all too become lustful after the men. And they will seek for attention for the men. So, uh, be careful where you wear your shorts. If you have to wear your short, why don't you do that in your bedroom before your wife? That's fine. You can wear your shorts. You can wear your pants before your wife. That's fine. But don't wear your pants and shorts on the street and walk about. And some of them wear shorts like this. We're showing all their private features. So tight and show their private features. And they do that because of the opposite says. Or those with that homo same says uh, uh, partners, they the sagging trousers. I don't know why you should sag your trousers. Are you a prisoner in the US prisons? Or you're a prisoner somewhere, you sag and you're walking, you the trousers is dropping, dropping from your waist and you're putting it back. It looks like a epileptic kind of nature. That's evil before the Lord. In Leviticus chapter 19, verse 28, you shall not make any cuttings to your flesh, for the dead not tattoo any marks on you and the Lord. Tattoos on your body. And that is very, very prominent these days. Everybody wants to wear a tattoo. People want to wear tattoos. That is evil before the Lord. That will take you to hell. And the Lord wants to repent of those things now. It is evil before the Lord. Stop putting tattoos on your body. What is, what is that for? You are telling God that God who didn't put tattoo on your body, didn't know what was. The Bible says that God created everything beautiful in his own eyes. And whoever you are, put a tattoo on your body. Let me assure you that you are beautifully and wonderfully made by the Almighty God. You are beautifully and wonderfully made by the Almighty God. Don't put tattoos on your body. It is evil before the Lord. And the Lord will touch you and I. And wherever you are, now listen to the sound of this voice. If you want to know the Lord, you want to worship the Lord, you want to be the Christian that the Lord wants you to be, and you want to make eternity in heaven, say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. Forgive me my sins, Lord, and I promise you I won't go back to evil anymore. I promise you I won't go back to my evil anymore. Help me now, Lord. Help me now, Lord. Help me now, Lord. Pray now in Jesus' name. Lord, anyone that has prayed that prayer sincerely, 
anyone and every everyone that's prayed that prayer sincerely write his one name in the book of life in jesus name the power the power to live a righteous life will come upon these individuals in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen and now we're looking at your blessings and waiting for you in the middle of your obedience i want to release god's blessing upon you for those of you that have been proactively obedient and for those of you that have just given your life to christ and this week you will experience the supernatural the unbelievable the gracious and you know indeed the lord has brought this word across your path father in jesus name pray for those that have been proactively obedient and for the people that have given your lives, their lives to you. I pray, Lord, you will experience great supernatural blessings coming upon them in Jesus' name. The Goliath posing a threat to them, taking away their joy. The Goliath in their marriages, in their academies, in their business, in their career. The Goliath, they are taken down by the power of God now in Jesus' name. And Lord, right now, they have the power, the confidence, the boldness, the confidence, the negotiating power, the negotiating power. They have the action before them and they will take this action and you will lead them the way they should go and then oh lord you'll have the success according to your revealed word in jesus name no stubborn blood before them this week no stubborn blood before them this, this week and they will return they will return with rounds of, of, of praises or rounds of testimonies before you in jesus name they will testify to your glory oh lord anything that stood as hindrance oh lord before now hit her too spiritually Peter too, physically, Peter too, socially, mentally, socioeconomically. Lord, I pray. All the hindrances, all the goliaths in that regard, they are taken off in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the power of God will visit your people. The power of God will visit us in a supernatural, definite way in Jesus' name. Lord, you have revealed this world. I pray, Lord, the revelation of your world, the greatness in your world. Oh, Lord, the, the, the propelling power. That will make us to achieve the unbelievable. You will give unto every ear that have heard me in Jesus' name. We'll give to every heart to have read this word. We'll give to every eye that have read the word. We'll give to every ear that have listened in the mighty name of Jesus. But the problems that are proved so strong even now, demystified, solved, taken care of by the power of heaven, by the power of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. You'll come back now. Your rounds, your blessings have been calculated and they're coming rounds. And then you come back now because of your confidence now, you'll see the receipt of your blessings and you'll return the glory of the Almighty God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know that you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. God bless you. Thanks for listening to the message. The blessings await you as you obey and pray along. For any inquiry, partnership and prayers, please check our YouTube page for contact as you click on the select icon. Please like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified on upcoming videos. And do not forget to share. God bless you.